Okay, so that's an update to all the fucking bullshit that's going on that never ends. Um, so, let's see. I filed this small claims case right after um, Quantum uh, gave me that eviction notice, violation, rule violence, whatever, back in July. So I countered with a July, uh, small claims for the last 12 months or so of uh, bed bugs. July 28th, I filed that bullshit. Um, I waited for them to respond. They never did, so, but so um, almost, so three weeks after, not even the 14 days, but I gave them like 21 days, 22. And so they, um, I, after you, if you don't respond in 14 days to this court thing, um, court case, um, you're legally allowed to file for default judgment. You said you file a motion, it's easy as shit, doesn't cost any money. And uh, the judge, after like they go through all this process, it's like the lower level judges. But once the judge gets it, according to the law, he's just supposed to sign it and confirm that, confirm the, the motion, grant the motion. I should say. Um, but in my case, weirdly, the judge took it upon himself to have a hearing um, on the motion for default, as if the 14 days wasn't good enough. And what the judge did was take my landlord tenant case, which I settled. They gave me um, what's called a relocation fees that the landlord has to pay you. Um, so it's twenty nine hundred dollars to leave by this month. Um, as, as long as I complied, I got the check. Uh, the case was actually dismissed, and there was no disputing. There was no dis no ambiguity. There was just there was clear cut that this settlement had mentioned nothing about not being able to get damages in the future from them. It was, I mean, it was just obvious to everyone, and so the judge took it upon himself to give the defense quantum or and or whoever. Uh, a, a chance that they didn't even ask to have to come and argue their side. And so um, I had to wait a month for that. And in the meantime, after they were granted that, um, and or um, filed a motion to represent Quantum uh, to the judge, to the court. Now that should have been rejected. That's an improper motion because they weren't granted. You can't be the counsel to ask to see if you can be the counsel because this is small claims and you have to, it's exceptional to even allow someone to have counsel. So, and or, on the, and or filed the motion rather than quantum filing the motion. So the judge already fucked up right there and accepted. So he accepted the motion then not only that, he granted the motion to have them have their attorneys at this hearing while I didn't, even though I've complied with everything that they had asked for. <laughs> Sorry about that. Check it. And so he's given them an opportunity to, to have a hearing, to defend this, give them the uh, idea that this settlement was, God, this guy, was um, covered everything in the future forever. Not only that, so I wrote to the judge and the court explaining why that would be ridiculous for me to have signed a document that said I'd never be able to get any future damages. And in that, um, in that document, I mentioned the HUD investigation that has also started. So I. Was it a week ago? Yeah, the week before, maybe two weeks before, um, I finally got clarification back from the Seattle HUD office. They had sent these, all the information around to a couple places around the country just to verify that this VAWA, Violence Against Women's Act, had been violated. So he sent me all these documents that I had to sign, you know, swear under perjury that these things had happened. And 
So I told the judge, I would never have signed that knowing I know that they're under federal investigation. I might still be able to get punitive damages from that. I would never, but so because a counsel was allowed, she told me in court, let me get back to that. We'll get back to that. Uh, I'm going to break this up into a second one. So this was everything up to the point of the court hearing, which was last uh, Friday. So let me catch you up on that.